Well, hello there ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is going to be a one hour stream. It is my surprise stream. And out of all my game deck, I decided to choose Valheim uh, because I haven't streamed this or played this for a long time. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start a fresh seed, a fresh game, and uh, get you seeing what this game is all about. It's a game that I love and uh, it's a great game. It's had quite a lot of updates recently, however, for those of you that probably haven't played it, I thought, you know what, I'll just go to the start and show you what this game's all about and give you some early kind of stuff. So, start game. Uh, what we want to do is we want to create a new character and we'll give him a name. So, we're going to literally call him Surprise and what we'll do is we'll leave him pretty much as he is. Uh, no, not no hair, that's a bit ridiculous. Let's give him some hair. Uh, let's choose, I don't know. Can we rotate him around? Yes, we can. Do we want a ponytail? Mm, it's very Viking. Uh, that's quite a good one. Quite a nice enough layout. Do we want a beard? No, that's fine. Hair tone, you can basically increase blondness uh, with the Vikingness. Uh, so there we go. Uh, you can change the hair tone as well, so you can play around with the colour a bit. We're not going to spend too much time doing this, we'll just make him uber blonde and uh, get it going. So we'll go done on that, and what we want to do is hit start, and what we want to do is ideally uh, copy the uh, seed from one of these. Uh, so P3K4P6XIXI, I should probably write that down. Um, because I know that these seeds are good and a seed determines on how a world is generated in this game So you can call it whatever you want uh, that doesn't matter uh, What does matter is the seed itself so the seed will determine how good your starting world is uh, In fact, I'm going to use the seed from uh, Alahan actually so I X 7 J lowercase p, uppercase l, uppercase y, and lowercase p, uppercase l, and d. Okay, so what we do is now we go new, and we need to give it a name. Again, I'm gonna call it surprise, uh, purely because this is our surprise stream. Here's the automatically generated seed, so we get rid of that, and we go ix at 7j. Uh, I've just written it down for no reason because I can still see it next to me anyway. I wrote it down as a just in case. Uh, so L, Y, uh, lowercase p, and then uppercase L, lowercase d. So we just go done. That's it. And there we go. There's our new world. And we go start. And that will start us in a brand new game, brand new seed, brand new everything. And I've got quite used to the start of this game, so I should be able to show you quite a bit in one hour of gameplay. And uh, might pique your interest in this game for you playing it yourselves, uh, or to go back to some of my older content uh, that I did for Valheim. And it also is gonna give me an idea or concept as to whether I wanna bring, bring it back to life as well. Uh, obviously, I've got a lot going on at the moment. We've got St uh, Frostpunk tomorrow, and we've got another two streams later in the week as well. Uh, and I have decided, and if you've seen my short, I've also entered the usual competition as well, so we'll see how that goes. And um, I think I may also need to invest in a camera um, so that I can have myself on the screen at the same time as I'm broadcasting if the YouTube competition goes anywhere. Um, not overly sure whether, I mean, I don't mind my face being on my streams, that's fine, I have no issue with that, but I think it kind of detracts from the gameplay, and I'm not going to be one of these people that starts, you know, putting my face in the middle of the videos and doing silly emotional reactions to stuff. That's not how I play. Um, I play the games for what they are, and to show people, you know, why it's worth playing them. So here we go, we're entering in. Uh, as far as I'm aware, we can't skip this. Uh, we literally have to let it go through but it does give you the history and the premise of the game. So, well, the law. Uh, so long ago, the All-Father Odin united the worlds. He threw down his foes and cast them into the 10th world, then split the boughs that held their prison to the world tree and let it drift unanchored, a place of exile. For centuries, this world slumbered uneasily, but it did not die. As glacial ages passed, kingdoms rose and fell out of sight of the gods. When Odin heard his enemies were growing once again in strength, he looked to Midgard to send his Valkyries to scale the battlefields for the greatest of their warriors. Dead to the world, they will be born again in Valheim. So, you're basically a risen warrior, and uh, that is uh, the premise of the game. 
So again, not going to stream for a huge amount of time, um, but it's just going to give you a good idea on this game. And it's a survival craft game at the end of the day. Uh, it is survival, it is crafting, it's building, it's forging, um, and it's all the kind of good stuff that we have in the other survival games that I play with this war of mine. Uh, Frostpunk, Sheltered, Sheltered 2, Fallout, Shelter, Fallout, Shelter, Survival Mode, and some of the other games, of course, that, that I do. But here we go, we're getting dropped off in our starting position, peeing it down with rain in the middle of a thunderstorm. Nice way to land in a new world, being risen from the dead, but here we go. Boom, I am wet. Okay, that's fair enough. Let's head straight over to uh, Hugin here. And uh, talk. So, welcome to the tenth world. Uh, the megaliths around you are the sacrificial stones. They represent the forsaken, which you must slay in order to ascend to Valhalla. So, we have to wipe everything out to go to Valhalla. Oh, here we go. Here's our new boss. Uh, this stone is a veg blah, blah, blah. This is your first prey, the mighty beast. Okay, so we read this, register the location. Here's Ichthyr. He's mm, quite close to us. So that's fine, get rid of the map, the M key, and at the moment we have a whole swamp of nothing, but more importantly we can see that there is water here. Now water is your best place, so we need to turn slightly right, but around here we should also find our initial food items and initial scavengeable items. So have a quick look around, uh, I think we can literally see the water, we can. So what we want to find ideally is some raspberries uh, first off, so let's have a quick run around. Oh, there's an abandoned building here. Okay, let's go and have a look. We've already improved run uh, to run one. Oh, at the moment we've got no weapons, this is not good. Uh, let's pick up wood. Uh, ideally we'll want some stone as well. This guy's probably not going to leave me alone. Let's uh, hit him with this, there we go, done some damage to him, he's on fire. Yeah, let's keep running after him, oh we've got another bad guy here. Let's give him a whack, let's add another whack, there we go, keep whacking him until he burns to death, and he's burned to death, lovely. Oh, we missed the ball, run after him, and there's some raspberries, lovely stuff, we'll take those. Oh, there's loads of boars, okay. Okay, we've got another strike on him, and he's burning down, and he's dead. Awesome stuff. Okay, so that's going to give us more of our initial food stuffs. Okay. Oh, and Hugin's popped up over here, so let's go to him. Give him a quick whack. Tasty morsel. Yep, you found a snack. I have indeed. That's great. Okay. I'm dry again now as well. The other boars, there's a deer running over there in the distance, but the first things we want to do is we want to find some stones, some more wood. Uh, there's some more wood here. Lovely. Let's get that picked up. And also mushrooms if we see them. And there's some resin there, we'll take that. Okay, so now we can craft a torch. Fantastic. Ah, I can see some mushrooms as well. Let's get rid of our torch, we don't need it now. I don't need to be running around waving it in the air. Oh yeah, we do, there's another bad guy. Let's give him a whack. There you go, set him on fire. Whack him again, and again, and he's dead, lovely. And that's some more resin, thank you very much. Now what we're looking for now is some stone because uh, we want to be able to craft our first axe. Okay, so let's get uh, that piece of wood picked up. Oh, okay, and we've got this as well, flint. That is a resource. Okay, let's pick up that piece as well. I, I haven't seen any stone yet, which is, ah, just as he said it, he found. Okay, so we found, and I can see some more up here actually. Perfect. Oh, for goodness sake. You little flamey pain in the bum. All right, glowy eyes, bum munch. Die, 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 die. And you're dead. Thank you very much for your resin. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to find somewhere that's going to make your good location for your first base. Now, uh, because you do construct in this game as well. So we're picking up lots of wood and stone, and we're going to start crafting that into items. So bring up our inventory with the tab key, and we can see what we can craft. So we're going to want to craft a stone axe, so get that crafted straight away. And then on top of that, we're going to want to craft a hammer, so get that crafted. There we go. That's our two initial items. And 
Hugin has reappeared, so let's give him a quick chat. Take stock of your inventory. Most items must be crafted, however, due to your recent departure from Midgard, you will have to recall the true shape of objects. Just picking things up and it will all come back to you, I'm sure. My lesser brother Munin tells me one can fashion a stone axe out of wood and stone. Well, we've already done that, because of course I'm well aware of that fact. And there is a deer over there. And here we go, Hugin's popped up over here as well. So you've crafted a hammer, so yep, with this we can start building stuff. Now I think here is a fairly good location for our first building, so all we have to do is start chopping stuff down. And let's get uh, let's get rid of that torch. Okay. Now we found raspberries and mushrooms. We can eat both. Now trees in this game will kill you. Okay, if you mistime the cut, and this one's going to wash straight into the water, where it's useless, that's handy. It's always great when it does that. So we'll chop this one down in the water, that's fine for now. It'll break in half, and then we'll get some more wood. Okay, keep chopping, keep chopping. Okay, now what we can do is maybe walk around the other side, and let's eat as well. Okay, we can't stand there. Okay. So go back to our axe, bring up our food, and we will eat, and we will eat. So that's now increased our health and our stamina. And let's uh, actually get our axe back. There we go. So a nice little wax turned it back towards the shore. Uh, we're not standing again, so you need to bring the axe back out again. I mean, ideally, I should just go and chop another tree down, really. Um, but we'll keep whacking this until we get the wood, and then I'll pick it all up. There we go. Okay, so we've got our, some of our initial wood. We want to pick up more flint as well, because we want to make a flint axe at the earliest opportunity, because it is much better uh, than the uh, stone axe that we're currently using. So again, cut down another tree. This time, hope that it uh, falls the uh, opposite way to the previous one. It doesn't end up in the water. If it does, it's fine. We'll just move slightly deeper into the forest uh, and cut them down that way. And of course it fell straight into the water. Okay, fine, heavy. Cut these down, nice and easy small sources of wood. And of course it also thins out the surrounding area that you're going to want to build your base in. So we're just collecting wood for now. At the moment we have got 25, we're going to need way more than that. I'd say 100 would be a good starting point. Uh, so it's basically a lot of cheap tree chopping to begin with. But once you've got your first base area up, you are good to go. Okay, so we'll bring this one down. There we go, which way are you falling? Which way are you falling? Oh, and there's a grayling. And he's going to run off for a few minutes and then come back again. But more importantly, we now have our tree that we can happily chop. So let's start chopping, wait for that grayling to come back and we'll give him a, a murderous blow to the head. So he dies. There we go. Keep chopping. Each, well, each section will bring you 10 wood uh, and then you can start using that wood to craft our first base, which is what exactly what we will be doing in this stream and showing you the early crafting recipes and the early stuff that you can do with the game. And uh, what I might do, just for uh, benefit, is load where you can get two uh, and show you. In fact, I might do. I might show my main save on this. Well, one of my main saves. You can see that grayling uh, heading back in this general direction. So for a first base, by the water is a good location to use. Okay, oh there he is, ow, die boy, okay, one dead and there's another one, get him killed as well, lovely stuff, next thing we want to do is go farming for uh, raspberries, so we need to have a look around and see if we can find any, because uh, at the moment we've only got enough food uh, for one more feed session, and we need more meat, and we need lots of other stuff as well. Okay, another tree is felled. 
So what I will do is I will show the basics here and then I will load, oh my stone axe is now broken so I need to build another one but I should have enough wood now so if we go to my inventory yeah we've got 54 to actually start building so now we switch to number three which is our hammer and we then go and so what we're going to build we want crafting station and we want a workbench so let's get a workbench put down uh, why is it not letting me put it down here maybe too close to the uh, ring so let's come down into this little bit here there we go now we can start building stuff and more importantly we can also repair our tools so what you can do is you can do a very basic workstation so a wall to the right and let's put another one in as well turn it round and then put the wall behind it and this is the simplest crafting station that you can build so there we go so four pieces of wall then just two pieces of roof so you need to put the roof over so it's protected from the rain there we go and now we can use our workstation so use and we can repair everything and uh, more importantly we can craft anything else so for a flint axe we need six flint so we don't have enough yet so we come away from our workbench and you need to scour the water's edge for flint okay so we run along the water's edge see what we can find the other thing really you should do is mark where your home is but we know that we're just walking along the water's edge so that's fine we've got five flint uh, keep going okay there's another piece and one more lovely that'll do for now run back and as you can see our stamina burns out very very quickly uh, the next thing we also need is stone and a load of other stuff So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to show this and then I'm going to load uh, Alahan, which is still an early game that I've been playing recently. So it's still not far on. So crafting, haven't even killed the first boss yet. So Flint Axe is now made, lovely. And then we can start building our own home. But for that, let's quit out of here. Not quit the game, no. Uh, let's go log out, yes. So this should take us back to the main menu and what I will do is I will load so start game and we'll go off of surprise uh, not to know it all with all the nice armor and everything else uh, it's not Bob I think it's Ardan the Great uh, is, it, is it Ardan? I think it might be Ardan uh, out of all the characters oh no hold on Thorin is it Thorin? yeah it might be Thorin actually Okay, so we'll go with Thorin, and we'll go to Alahan, and we'll go start. And this will show you a base that has been started to be built, uh, along with other stuff as well. So I can show you more of the game. And then I need to work out which character I used for which save, if I show you more advanced into some of the mid-game, when the first two bosses have been killed, and you're moving on to the third. So here we go, okay, we have arrived. So I'm using the, the correct character uh, because we are in our home and this is all the gear that we have now got. Okay, so this is deer meat, we have boar meat, we have a neck, which is like a lizard that lives by the water's edge. Uh, so that is another food source. So all of our food is here and we have loads of other resources. Now in our home, we also have some chests that we've made and in fact might as well dump off some of this stuff uh, my feathers are in here I've already got one of those there so let's put that in there uh, the seeds I think are over in this one yes they are so let's put the seeds down here as well as the stag trophies uh, the meat we can keep on us for now but let's take the leather scraps okay and the hides and put those in there so move the raw ingredients over uh, we don't really need the torch so we can get rid of that uh, the wood will keep and the flint can go into there okay so we have our fire here this allows us to cook meat uh, let's show you the outside of this simple house so this simple house what I've done is I have my house with my chimney stack I have a secure wall around the outside and again this is very early game I still haven't uh, wiped out the first boss yet 
and this is one of the other things when you're playing what you want to do once you've crafted your first home is you want to start marking the locations of bet raspberries if there's burial crypts uh, what, and what other stuff you find as you explore so if we go outside outside my base uh, we've got a couple of torches outside and as you can see I've built by the water's edge as I was saying it's always worthwhile to build by the water's edge because eventually you will want to build a boat and you will want that boat to sail around the world which is very very big okay the worlds in Valheim are huge and they take a lot of exploration and for that you need Viking longships and those Viking longships will allow you to sail around the world. Now this game is also multiplayer, so if you create a server, you can play this with up to uh, 10 of your friends as well, uh, which is good fun. I've always done it solo, um, but again, if you want to do it with other people, it's certainly an option. Uh, so our workbench has been upgraded here with the chopping block and the tanning station, which allows us more upgrades. We've got all of our stuff repaired, and what I will do is I will take on the first boss um, because I think my crude bow, where is it, it's level 2 at the moment. Uh, can I upgrade it to level 3? Let's have a look. Uh, I can, but I need 8 leather scraps and 2 deer hide. So I don't think I have 8, so we might need to go and find some boar. Uh, let's have a quick look. That was empty. Uh, okay, nothing in there. So we've got 3, so we need 5 more leather scraps. Uh, we've got plenty of these, uh, so uh, I'm trying to remember, I think you can split the stack, uh, I'm trying to remember what it is, though that's it, it's left shift and click, so you then go down to what you want, so we'll split it to two, and we'll put the two that we need, okay, and then tab, gets rid of everything, and out we go again, and we'll have a look for some boar. Now I've explored quite a bit of the surrounding area on this map uh, and you can often find boar in this direction, let's see if we've got any, and also near the starting spawning spot which is down here uh, you can also find them as well. Now your bed is marked but something I haven't done on this map which I should have done is mark this as home so double click on the map with the symbol that you want and then give it whatever name you want so we will call that home or you can call it much more sense to call it first base because you will start having forward operating bases you'll have mining bases um, and loads of different base types as you progress through the game okay so again now what we're looking for is piggies so it's, there we go here's one let's give him a uh, slap insta death because obviously I've leveled everything up there's some leather scraps fantastic so that is uh, four we need to find four more boar uh, so here is where we came in so this is our landing location and where all the sacrificial uh, stones are for when we kill the bosses which each gives you a special power uh, the first one gives you the ability to uh, run without burning off your stamina oh I just seen some raspberries not that I really need them um, in fact, I can probably eat some now. Uh, so let's bring up my inventory. Yep, let's get that eaten. There we go. Anything else can be eaten now? No. Okay, so we'll leave these raspberries. We don't need them. They're quite close to home. Uh, and it's a little stockpile if we need to go back at any point in time. Now, again, let's have a look around, see if we can find any boars. It's going to be the lore of Sod that uh, I'm not going to be able to find any. Uh, but we can just keep running around. Uh, we're in daytime. I can see some neck uh, down by the water's edge. Uh, so those are the lizards that I was talking about. So you can see those down there. Uh, that is a food source. And again, as I said, this is a fairly early-ish save. Um, I do have much further low uh, progress in the game, uh, including where I've built with stonework and castles and all that kind of stuff. And also the game has released uh, new content in the form of Mistlands, um, and loads of other stuff is coming in the roadmap. They've also massively improved their team, uh, so they've recruited a lot of people. This started out with only a couple of people developing the game uh, when it first came out in early release, and the user base of this went mental. Um, I think there's like 17 million registered players for this game. It may be more now. It may be like 20 million, 30 million. But it is a very popular game. If you don't play it, um, I would suggest, and it's your kind of game, so it's 
my kind of game because it's survival so it's survival and crafting and it just has this viking t uh, tilt on it which I quite like uh, so there's this, oh, there's a deer there that hasn't for some reason noticed me and just as I went to get my bow it runs off <laughs> so now see we can see the wind direction if I'd been creeping then so with the control key um, I would have been able to probably just run up and axe um, that deer and uh, got some more hide. Hi Frank. Uh, this is Valheim. So this game has been out now for mm, over a year. Um, I played it uh, back when it was uh, early access. It still is kind of, um, but they do have a big roadmap now and they do have a lot more developers working on the game. Uh, we're At the moment we're trying to find boar. Uh, so I can kill them for some leather scraps so I can improve my bow and then go for the first boss. I might actually just go for the first boss anyway um, and see ha see what's what. I might get killed, might get killed a few times. It's not the end of the world if that happens. Um, so we might do that. Because my boar locating skills uh, so far have proved fairly fruitless. We've been running around. There's some neck, uh, not what we need. So we'll just run past them. Yeah. They're easy kills. Actually, how much neck meat do I have? Not not a lot. Alright, fellas. There you go. You're dead. Thank you very much. Give me your tail. Lovely. Where'd the other one go? There you are. Yeah, chasing me was a bad idea. Thank you very much. I'll take your tail. Because it makes for a tasty snack. Uh, you can see my base there in the distance. Lovely. And no boar. This is always the way. When you're looking for something specifically, it never spawns. And then when you're not looking for it, you find hundreds of them. Seagulls, as they land, you can hit them with your bow to get more feathers to make more arrows. So you shoot the uh, seagulls and collect their feathers, uh, and that lets you make more arrows. Oh, there's some uh, mushrooms down there. When I say some, there's like, oh yeah, there's two, and another one there, three, and there's one there, four, lovely, I'll take those. That's a nice food source. And later on, you can make that in combination with other ingredients to make much more complica complicated foods. And also later on, you'll, you'll get carrots, which you can pl uh, plant and harvest and start farming. Oh, grayling. Let's get him killed. Lovely stuff. Everything in this is basically your enemy. Uh, there isn't anything really that is a friend um, other than uh, the trader. And that's where you can buy some extra special stuff off of. Uh, so here's a sign here that is saying, you know, about life and forest and everything else. And there should be boar around here. But as you can see, at the moment, it's just a grey link. So let's give him a slap. Another slap. And I think we might just go after the first boss. Yeah, let's go home, repair everything, sort uh, all of our armour and everything out and go after the first boss. Just to so show you guys what the first boss is like. Especially as uh, we've only got another kind of 30 minutes of this stream to go because uh, it is a fairly short surprise stream uh, Me and the family we watched uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife today uh, Which why is why I started the stream a little bit late. So let's go back into my base now all of this has been built by me uh, And in fact while we're talking about that it might be an idea how much wood have I got on me? I've only got 12 Mm, no, I'll leave that for now. That's fine. I was just thinking I might add a couple more roof panels uh, and get this bit closed off. And then later on what you do is you end up building a cook house as well, so you have multiple fires going. Uh, let's throw some extra wood onto the fire. There we go. And cook some of the stuff that we've got. There we go, get that cooking. Lovely stuff, and it makes that lovely sizzling sound once it's ready. And then you can take it off and in a pinch when you need charcoal for your charcoal kiln you can actually burn meat and turn it into charcoal but for now we'll wait for it to be cooked and then we'll take it off the fire there we go lovely that's the first two ready and the second two fantastic okay so let's eat and let's eat that as well there we go so you can see my health going up so food, when it is red, it gives health. 
Uh, when it is yellow, it gives more stamina, and when it is silver, it is balanced, so it gives equal health and stamina. Now it's getting dark. Let's get everything repaired. Now for an upgrade of the leather tunic, we need bones and um, deer hide, which we don't have, so we can't really upgrade our armor either. Um, but I think level one should be fine for the boss, but let's uh, go to sleep, start a new day. So here's our bed, so go to sleep. And that will start a new day, and then we'll go and kill the first boss. Now, when the game first came out, the first boss you could kill very, very easily. Um, it's not quite so easy now, and you also used to be able to cheese it just by building a tower. Um, however, we can't do that now. So we can see Ichthyr is over here, uh, so this symbol here on the map. And that's where we need to go to spawn the boss. And for that, we need deer head trophies. So we'll take the trophies with us. There we go. And off we trot, we will spawn the boss. I may live to regret this. Because um, again, this is my uh, personal restart of the game. But hey, don't care. We should really wait for daylight as well. Um, but you will see that daylight really doesn't matter because Ichthyr creates their own kind of uh, weather uh, when we get there. So I've got my shield, I've got my axe, um, you have defensive combat in this as well so you need to parry and you need to defend and also talking about that we need to uh, put our deer heads into a slot so there we go and close that off so we'll be able to put them on with number seven and each boss has its own sacrificial items uh, so here we go here is the sacrificial table and we are about to spawn the first boss okay offer item so we'll offer number seven we make the sacrifice and here we go here he is good old ick there Run, run, run. You have to watch your stamina as well. That's one of the other things. You have to monitor your stamina. Okay, that's another 25. As you can see, it's damage at the moment. So let's go for more hardy weapons. Yep, we took a bit of damage there. And more importantly, we need to eat raspberries. Oh, that was quite a hit. Yep, see, arrows were a much better option. Uh, we need to run a bit, and more importantly, we need to switch to fire arrows. So fire arrows are more effective, which I crafted uh, myself. There we go, set them on fire, burning off a bit of health. Again, run, watching your stamina at all times for the first boss. As I said, it's not that difficult to beat. It's just a lot of moving and dodging his attacks. Run, and I need to eat as well. Raspberry. Whoop, jump over that, which burns off a lot of stamina, but that's fine. Again, yeah, another fire arrow on him, which of course does subsequent damage, which is why we're doing it. It doesn't just do the initial damage, it does subsequent damage. My stamina is now burning off quite a lot, so let's try and let it recharge. Okay, run, run, run. We've gotten down to about half health. Yeah, he's still on my ass. Okay, trying to run around these rocks, as you can see, I use these rocks as defensive positions. Makes it a bit more difficult for him to hit you. He fires this awful lightning if you get hit by it. There we go, another arrow into him. And the battles in this game can take quite a lot of time. Uh, come on, leave me alone, dude, leave me alone. I'm almost out of stamina. Oh, he's still behind me. Come on, stamina. Recover, 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 recover. He's right behind me. He needs to pause for an attack. There we go. That's time to attack back. Headshot. Nice. Ouch. OK, 
again, keep running and using the rocks. He can't run through. Oh god, he's still there. Yep. Whoops, ouch. Okay, 11 stamina. I need to get that. Ah, there we go. Come on, get another arrow in. That's it. And run. Where is he? Come on, try and get a headshot. Okay, his health is coming down quite nicely. Now, uh, yep, dodge. Okay, again, I'm trying to go for headshots. Ouch. My health is recovering because I've got plenty of food in me, so that's fine. Now, right, run, 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 run. Keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running, round. Dodge round back up, dodge round back up. Oh, totally missed with that arrow, fantastic. There we go, that's another hit. He is nearly dead. Keep dodging, keep dodging. And another one. Come on. Die, Mr. Ichthyr, die. Yep, took a ripping hit then. As I said, not hugely difficult, but at the same time, quite stressful. There we go, on fire again. Come on, is he dead? Yes, he is. Fantastic. Okay, so, first boss is now dead. The weather suddenly and magically recovers, and we need to pick up the head, as well as all of these bones. Now, these bones will allow us to make our first pickaxe. And here we go. Hugin here is ready to talk to us. Congratulations, return to the sacrificial stones with your forsaken trophy and offer it as a sacrifice to make the gods smile upon you. Okay, which is exactly what we will do. So we need to go back here to, oh no, where's it gone? We need to go back to here. So we need to be turning right uh, to about there, I think. That's probably the right heading. Let's have a look and zoom out a bit. Yeah, that's about right. So just follow this general direction and we can return our head, so our trophy, which is here, Ichthyr's head, to the sacrificial stones, and we will get our first god power. Okay, so that's the first boss killed, and more importantly, we can now also turn the bones into a pickaxe, which will allow us to get our first ores. Oh, there's some raspberries there. Actually, I don't need them. I've got uh, 49 raspberries on me. And the other thing is as well, as the early game progresses, don't eat loads and loads and loads of your raspberries. Oh, deer there that I could have killed. In fact, let's switch back to my flint arrows because I don't need to use my flint and my fire arrows anymore. Because we're not facing anything overly dangerous in the next few minutes. Now we're in a burial crypt, which I've already uncovered, so I can show you what the second boss is as well. So here we go. These are all the boss stones, so we need to find Ichthyrs. So it's not the dragon, it's not the giant skull, it is certainly not the giant rock blob monster thing, and it's certainly not the tr tall tree. It is this one over here. So go to number eight and put it on. So here we go. Your ability to run and jump is improved. Jump stamina minus 60%, run stamina usage minus 60%. E to activate power. And forsaken, sacrificed. Okay, so hail warrior. You've been granted the power of Ichthyr. Use it in times of need. Your next target dwells in the Black Forest. Go there, explore the lands, and uncover the lost treasures and resources. Well, before we do that, we want to actually go and make a pickaxe so I can show you um, mining as well. So let's trot over here, back to our base. Doesn't matter how much stamina we use. Was that another deer? Oh, it was. Oh my goodness, it's probably a two star as well. Okay, creep. Hopefully he hasn't gone too far. I can see him running over there. Do you know, I've been after this two star deer, or he might be a one star, but he's got horns which means he's probably going to drop quite a lot of hide. Um, here he goes, he's sat over there, that's good. Okay, creep. Don't get too close, I can't see which way the wind's going. And now you aim way above. 
because it's an arrow at the end of the day. Oh my goodness, I still missed. Oh, headshot, nice. Let's see how much stuff he dropped. Oh, loads, lovely. Oh no, not that much, two deer hide and two meat. Mm, wasn't terrible, but still, I can add it to my collection. Okay, let's run back to base. <clears throat> Again, this is an awesome game. I've I've sunk well over a hundred hours uh, into this, and I do know that some of the people that have been playing it like hardcore um, have put five, six, seven hundred hours into this game. So, okay, so here we are. We're back at home. Put our weapons away. Also, one other thing you can do when you've got your axe and shield like this, you can press X. Uh, sorry, not X. Um, get back up, mate. It's V, wasn't it? Was it G? T? T, that was it. And that puts them on your back so you can run better, but it does mean that you can get your weapons much quicker because they're stored on your back. Okay, let's go to our workbench. Get everything repaired. And now we can make an antler pickaxe. So we'll get that crafted. There we go. So that is in our slot. We don't need this anymore. Uh, so we can get this back here. Go into our storage and get all the extra stuff that we're carrying dropped off that we don't need. So, okay. We don't need those. We certainly don't need those. Uh, we don't need the extra wood. We don't need that for now, so we can get that dropped back in. The extra uncooked food, we don't need either, so we can get all that dropped off. Uh, we've got 11, 11, 8, 49 and 14, so we've got plenty of food. So get that closed, and we will head to the Black Forest. Oh great, it's decided to rain. Fantastic. Oh, actually it'll be worth bringing a torch, uh, which we do have. Uh, da -da, not in that one. There it is. So I'll bring a torch as well. I have conveniently on the map marked a location which is here which is a burial crypt and that will give us the location to the second boss now that we've killed the first boss and uh, ready for our second oh Hugin wants to talk to us again you've crafted a pickaxe black forest is rich in minerals there you can find copper in the ground and tin lining the ocean's shore now go forth and strike the earth Yep, because that's what we need to do. We need to keep crafting. So let's head towards the burial crypt that I've marked on the map after killing this deer. When opportunity presents itself, never miss it. A free target is a free target at the end of the day. Oh, is that another one directly behind? It is. Ah, it ran just as I fired. Uh, why am I not picking that up? should pick it up automatically oh well that's fine we'll just keep going the way we're going and now what we can also do is use the power of ichthyr as well uh, if we choose to uh, let's also eat there we go oh deer's coming back hitting a moving target is always challenging because it seems to run in random directions so let's just get our shield and axe back and put it on our back We can kill him now. Okay, again, aim way above because it's an arrow, it's not a gun. There we go. Direct strike. Again, it's something you pick up with something. Yeah, for some reason, still not picking it up. Okay, I've even got it in my inventory now and it's still not picking it up. Strange. Okay, that's a bit of a precipice. Uh, we're going to want to try and go around rather than across. There's a boar down there as well. We'll take him out. As you know, we need uh, leather scraps for something that we want to upgrade. Bye bye, Mr. Boar. Thank you for your stuff. Whoops. Yep, leather scraps, lovely. Meat, yep, okay. Well, the meat we don't particularly need, but I'll take it anyway. And we keep going. So, have a look at the map. We're getting there. run 
down and up. I can see a Grayling there. We'll deal with him. Bye bye, Mr. Grayling. Thank you. You have been of service. Oh, an old abandoned building and an abandoned farm. That's fine. We don't care. We need to eat some more meat. There we go. Improve our health. Okay, we need to turn left slightly. Again, keep heading through. Hopefully the rain will stop at some point, or either that or it will turn into a monsoon. Ooh, lots of mushrooms. How many have I got? 14. Definitely be taking these. I think I've turned off auto pickup accidentally. <laughs> Okay, so this is the Black Forest. And these guys, you'll notice, have got blue eyes, not yellow eyes. So these are slightly uh, harder to defeat, and they drop additional resources as well, including these Grey Dwarf eyes, which we will need to make portals later in the game to travel between different areas quicker. And I'll show you what I mean with that as well in a little bit. Some more mushrooms, so we'll get those picked up. Now this is a copper deposit, so might as well show you. Uh, so seven. Use our pickaxe. Get this ground broken. Quite a few smashes required, as you can see. But smash, and we have some copper. And a hell of a lot of stone as well. So we'll take another bit as well. It's quite heavy. There we go. Is there any more copper here? No, that's just all stone. See, sometimes you don't get copper, you just get stone. Right. Pickaxe to the head, followed by... Let's pick up that resin. There we go. Oh, did I just see? No, that was all just stone. Okay, so back to number seven again. Keep smashing this piece of rock. Now, the other thing with this game as well is these copper deposits are actually enormous. So, as an example, if I hit this piece of ground now and go deeper and dig it down, this copper deposit keeps going. And I have strip mined an area and this deposit is giant. All of them are giant. Uh, we can take more stuff off the top for now, that's fine. We've already got pickaxes to seven. What I'm trying to get is just a bit more copper. But we also need some other things before we can do anything with the copper. And that we need from the crypt. Okay, was there any copper there? Yes, there was. There we go. Two more copper. Okay, that'll do for now. So we've got some copper ore. It weighs quite a lot, so you can see our weight capacity. We're at 123 out of 300. So let's put our pickaxe away, get our axe back out, and go to the crypt. We'll talk to Hugin first. Raw ore needs to be refined in the smelter before you can work it at the forge. Yes. To build a smelter, you'll need circling cores. Search for them in the dark places beneath the earth. Now, the dark places beneath the earth are underneath these crypts which is exactly where we're going now. So another risky, dangerous location. Now, hopefully they haven't gone overly hardcore with this. Uh, I did notice um, last time I reset, so we've got a skeleton here. Now I parried that just as he went to strike me, which is why he got confused and fell back. So if you block just at the right moment, you will parry the attack, you'll take no damage, and uh, it's a much better way of doing things. Right, so in we go. Okay, so we're in a burial chamber. Now, we want to bring up number eight. We want to keep our shield, and we want to start exploring, because this place will have skeletons. So let's open the door. Okay, we've got another door here. Let's go. Whoop! 
Okay, let them come to me. No, they're not going to. Oh, I've got one behind me. What? Oh, come on. Seriously, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Because you lose all your gear. Everything you lose. So this is another brutal part of this game. So in that crypt is now all of my uh, gear. So I am now butt naked. Okay, so I have to go through here. I have to take some of my clothing. So my low level clothing. So rag tunic and everything else. Okay, what we might also want to do, of course, is take food because we don't have any. So again, we're going to need to cook. So let's cook some food. And of course we have no weapons either because we have no spare weapons. So we're going to have to rebuild everything. Okay, let's put all this here. And do we have any more wood? No, so we're going to have to go and find some. Okay, that's fine. Did I pick it? Ah, uh, da da. I thought I had leather scraps. Yes, I have. There we go. Okay, so we're going to have to go and get some wood. We can't even make an axe at the moment. I'm very conscious that it's uh, peeing it down with rain. Uh, but that's fine. Oh, here we go. Hail Warrior. You suffered a mortal blow. Each time you are struck down, you will forget a small part of your abilities and drop your belongings at the site of the accident. If you wish you were home by now, I'd recommend building a bed wherever home may be. Okay. Well, we'd already done that, so that's fine. And smash down some of these beaches. There we go. Fists work in a pinch. So I literally just punch the trees down. That's it. That's a bit more wood and some resin. Punch this one down as well. Okay, now we should be able to build a uh, stone axe. So, really? Nope, we haven't got enough stone. Oh, and the blues are out. Fantastic. Because, uh, of course, it's night time, isn't it? Okay, get our gate shut. There is fire outside, which should keep them at bay for now. Uh, did we have any extra stone? No, we didn't. Fantastic. So it's gone from bad to worse. We're exposed. Uh, we need to also cook meat as well. Oh, dear me. Dear me. I think what I might do now is flick to one of my main saves just to show you how it advances even further rather than uh, spending the uh, last five minutes of the stream uh, just basically rebuilding my uh, stockpiles. Right, okay, let's eat the meat. There we go. And the next thing to do is to put this meat away and so it only cooks the uh, deer meat. There we go. So the deer ribs are now cooking. Now they won't come into my base because the torches outside are defending the base because those tree creatures don't like fire but you can hear them throwing stone. And of course at the moment I can't even build a weapon. And I can't sleep either because they're near the base. Okay, now we can eat one of these as well. Again, gives us a lot more. Let's see if we can sleep. Okay, we can. It will let us sleep. Okay. So that will then start a new day, and those monsters go away because they come from the dark forest and they can only come out at night. So by going to sleep and uh, waking up during the day, they should be gone. Okay, well, we haven't quite got daylight yet, but I would imagine. Yep, you can still hear them throwing stones outside. So now to get the resources that we need to do stuff. Uh, oh no, actually I can create a flint axe, can't I? Okay, so flint axe, let's craft that. We can also create our leather helmet again, so let's create that. And get that worn. 
So a bit more armor. There we go. That'll do. Get everything repaired. We can't build a uh, shield because we don't have uh, enough wood now. But at least we do have an axe. Oh, I think they might have gone actually. Okay. Right. Anyway. So that's what you do, you have to rebuild all your gear, so now what I'd have to do is chop down some trees, get loads of resources, uh, build everything up, go back to the crypt, and proceed to hunt again. So, let's show you how the game progresses. So let's get us inside, because it will save it where I leave it. So X to sit down and rest, and then escape, and log out, yes. And for the last couple of minutes of the stream, I will just show you how far you can get. Well, kind of mid-game. I won't show you a full game. I'll show you mid-game. So, start game. We will use... Uh, da -da. Let's, I think it's Thor. Is it Thor or is it... Um, or is it Know-It-All? I think it might be Know-It-All, actually. So, let's go with Know-It-All. And go start. And then, I think it would have been... Midgard with an E, I think. Let's go start. If we don't start, if we don't spawn um, in the last place that I saved the game, then we're using the wrong character. But I'm hoping this is my castle. I am looking forward to doing uh, another Frostpunk stream tomorrow, so I hope everyone comes back and tunes in for that. And of course, if you're watching this uh, after I've streamed, uh, then don't forget to check out my Frostpunk content. Now, the fact that it's taking a bit longer to load makes me think I may have picked the wrong combination of location and character, but we will see. Come on, because all I literally want to do is show my castle. There we go, we're going in. No, I've used the wrong character. Okay, and none of the uh, map has been explored. Fantastic. So, wrong character, wrong combination. Great. Okay. Oh well, it was a nice try. I'll give it one more go. So if it's not that, uh, then it must be... Uh, yeah, because that's bronze gear, isn't it? So Thor and Midgard. Let's try that combination. Actually, should tell you which character is associated with me, which map. It would make it much easier, uh, but we'll find out momentarily. That was a bit quicker to load, so I think we might have picked the right combination this time. Right. Okay. So this is the right, but let's have a look at the map. Where are we? Waterfront base, village, two star deer, Ichthyr. Nope, this is not my most advanced in the slightest. But if I go into my uh, inventory, you can see I have bronze plate uh, armor, I have a deer hide cape, I have bronze helmet, bronze plate leggings, I also have a fine wood bow, I have a bronze axe. Uh, I have much better food, so I have Queen's Jam, which is really good, and in fact I'm apparently hungry at the moment anyway, uh, so we'll eat that, uh, we'll eat Tail, and then we'll eat Queen's Jam, and that gives us a huge hefty boost to everything, 
We've also got some new recipes and new stuff that we can build as well, uh, which is all coming along. There we go, coin stacks, blah, 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 blah. Nice, okay, that's purely because of where I am in the game. And uh, I've got a nice little fireplace in here, in my home, okay. So as if we come outside, this is this base. So out here we have a workshop area that I've built uh, then we have a forge, uh, then we have a cooking area, uh, we've got a hand cart that we can drag around with us, and this is our front base. Now beyond our front base, uh, there would then be portals that you use to travel around to other places, uh, if this was my main, and as you can see here's ho home, uh, so where my first base was, um, which is up the top of the hill. Oh, there's Hugin, what's he want to talk about? Yeah, okay, really? Yeah, I know all that information, thank you, but okay. And again, I've laid this path as well, and this path is for my cart, and we can take that all the way up to my other base, which is at the top, uh, which is my main home, so we'll keep going. Let's just enable it there, there we go. This isn't my main save, this is a mid save, so because I've still only got the power of Ichthyr, I haven't even killed the second boss with this save, but it does give you a bit more of a, an idea as to what you can possibly build. So as you saw, I have my waterfront base, now I have my beehives here, so my beehives here have honey, which you can extract, so if you find a queen bee, you can uh, collect that queen bee and you can set yourself up with a beehive, and from that of course you can also make mead. Uh, and other delightful treats uh, that give you benefits and everything else. So we come around here and here is the main base that I built. And actually this is the first base I ever built. Uh, so here we have additional stone piles, so additional resources. Uh, then I have my kiln and my, um, so my charcoal kiln and my smelter uh, for making raw ores. I have a nice little storage area here. Uh, then I have an outdoor work area, I have an outdoor cook station with three fires and another forge here and another workbench here at the back and then if we go inside my main house uh, I segmented this as well so if we go in here, close this off, I've got a little back storage area over here oh come on go in, probably find the games reconfigured so this is where basically the whole house started from and then uh, I've got a nice little table and chairs. I've got a cauldron here. Okay, and a cauldron you use to cook things, so you can make mead, uh, you can make soups, uh, you can make other stuff as well. And a bed. But all of this stuff has been built by me, so by hand. But, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is Valheim, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Until next time, I'm Know It All Gaming, wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, and of course, good night. <laughs>